Good morning, Danielle. Oh, good morning, <laughs> Federico. I think I was on the wrong um, Zoom. I don't know, but uh, thank you uh, for for sending me the the links uh, again. Thank you for being here with us. Um, I, I think, what time is it now? It, 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 uh, early. Very early. So it, it was uh, like ve very nice to meet you also for the effort you made. And uh, I've been following your organization for a long time. So I'm very happy now to see you here. Great. Thank you. And thanks for having me. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person for some of the other events that are happening, but it looks like a really exciting agenda. And uh, I'm happy to see what you all are discussing and coming up with and hope hopefully I could contribute something. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can. Like as Pronun said, and Alejandro really made a great job uh, in organizing these two days. I also wanted to be there in Barcelona, but then uh, too many things after the COVID started again uh, mm -hmm. in many different places. So I, I couldn't make it too. I was really wanted to go to Barcelona, but... And, and, we're, we're, and, and we're, you're in where? I'm in, I'm in Bologna. I'm in Italy. Bologna. Okay. okay. Yeah. Hello, Paolo. Hello, Paolo. Hello, Paolo. Nice to meet you. Nice to, nice to meet you. It's a pity that you are not able to come to Barcelona. It would have been great to have you here in Barcelona, all of you. So <laughs> I'm happy to be here and to meet, uh, well, at least to do it online. Uh, yeah, it'll be great. Anyway, I, I will come soon. I promise. I really miss Barcelona. <laughs> okay. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, hello. Good morning again. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Daniel, to to be here. <laughs> that is uh, quite late for you. That's, so, uh, that's we appreciate fun. very much that you make this effort to be with us. And also, Paul, thank you very much for for your time to thank to be here. Uh, like yes, and perhaps we wait. Uh, I think more people is joining online, and after we have also a three a three people here that will present directly in the stage. That means that uh, we have a very hybrid hybrid event. Okay, uh, perhaps we wait uh, two more minutes, no, to start uh, something like that. That's fine. Uh, so, Paolo, we, I, I would love to catch up with you as well because of uh, Isaiah and all of this, and we, yes. do, we definitely need to to touch yeah. base. And I want to maybe we'll set up a meeting soon. For for sure, Daniel. We 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 had some we have some conversations pending, and we. We will need to follow up those conversations that we somehow in this crazy year we are all living. We had to <laughs> to deal with other things now. Uh, next week I'm starting this uh, science biennial here in Barcelona, uh, which originally was the idea was to do it together with the ICA. You know, remember that it was in 2021, so we had to move to 2022. So we had to split the science biennial that is going to take to start this uh, 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 Tuesday, the, the next week, and uh, and we are to leave it I see for 2022. So hoping and wishing that 2022 will be a better year for all of us. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think it, I'm actually looking forward to it. I've I've started to set up so many amazing things, and there's so everyone's going to be. We're going to see. I think a lot more hybrid things back in person. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah. I guess that we should all uh, adapt <laughs> and see what it comes. I'm trying to put, uh, okay, some background here, but. Good morning, Sita. Hello. Happy to see you. Good to see you all. Hello, Sita, welcome. Hello. Virtually to, to Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you came uh, soon to visit our city. The same to, to Daniel. That is, uh, you are welcome. And I think also Pau Alcina is happy to have you both here <laughs> yeah, in, for in sure. the city. Yes, perhaps uh, we could uh, start uh, in... Uh, 
Perhaps I think it's the now is 10, 11, sorry. That means uh, hello, uh, everybody that is uh, here in the, our space, Spronceda, Spronceda Institute for Art and Culture, that we are an institution that is promoting uh, the art thinking and also the all the cultural content. And um, our main uh, mission is to put together or a people that came from different uh, backgrounds and different uh, initiatives. And that's why we, also, we have also this program, the name is Immensiva, Immensiva that, uh, that is uh, focused in art, science, technology, and society. And we are bringing together artists, uh, uh, coders, uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, thinkers, and people who could co-create together. And today we are very happy to host uh, uh, an event that is uh, part of uh, our the European project I for Future. I for Future is a, a, cre a Creative Europe project that is uh, 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 managed by Cineglosa that we have uh, here, Federico Bomba that I will introduce later, and we have also. Uh, wonderful partners in, in Rotterdam, B2, that is uh, here Shieta with us, and uh, we, uh, she, she will introduce in, in a moment, and also the Meet and Digital Culture Center of Milan that we have uh, here in our space, the president and director, Maria Grazia Ma uh, Matei, and also uh, Ro Rosana Dinuzzo, that is uh, managing this project for, for the institution. And uh, the, the coordinator is Cineglosa that Federico will introduce now. And also the, it's an, an additional partner that is uh, Sardegna Teatro. That is uh, also a wonderful partner related with uh, performative arts. And uh, today is also an event related with New European Bauhaus Initiative that is based in three words that we are going to discuss all, all about, that is uh, beautiful, sustainable, and together, how we could co-create a next, next future that will be uh, good for our society, not only in Europe. I hope uh, we will um, open a new movement for all over the world. And I think uh, Daniel, that is uh, representing a uh, wonderful organization, uh, Leonardo will explain us about, about that, the, the big experience. And also in, in, in the States, we have uh, Mariana, who comes from Transit Projectes, and Martin Romeo, that is an artist and professor from uh, Venice and Milan. But and now I, I give the, the voice to the conductor, to, the, uh, to this panel discussion, that is Federico Bomba. F please, Federico, uh, it's your, your, yes. your time. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alejandro. Thank you again for organizing these two amazing days. I couldn't be in Barcelona, but I saw the panel yesterday and uh, the, like the, all, all the uh, activities that you're organizing look amazing. Um, and thank you for uh, asking me for, uh, to, con to, to, to moderate this panel with uh, some um, great guests. Uh, and we will discuss uh, today uh, about the relationship between the real and the virtual world. And for uh, this reason, I would like uh, uh, to uh, start this panel uh, in the frame of the online manifesto, Being Human in a Hyperconnected Era, which was written in 2014 by a uh, group of scholars led by Luciano Floridi, the father of the information philosophy. Uh, so I will just quote a few sentences now so that we can frame the, the, the conversation because I think they express in a quite synthetic way and well the questions that we will address today to the, to the conversation. So they say ICTs are not mere tools, but rather social forces that are increasing, increasingly affecting our self-conception, so who we are, our mutual interaction, so how we socialize, our conception of reality, which is our metaphysics, and our interactions with reality, our agency. In each case, 
ICTs have a huge ethical, legal, and political significance, yet one with which we have begun to come to terms only recently. Now, it's not really recently because it was in 2014. Now, we are used to that. So the uh, impact exercised by ICTs is due to at least four major transformations. The, uh, the first one is the blurring of the distinctions between the reality and virtuality. And then the blurring of the distinction between a human, machine, and nature. So at that time, they were not talking about Anthropocene, but actually th this is the topic between Anthropocene and post-Anthropocenic era. Uh, the reversal from information scarcity to information abundance. And the shift from the primacy of standalone things, properties, and binary relations to primacy of interaction, processes, and networks. So this is uh, like a short introduction coming from the, the, the online manifesto, which I think with the uh, on life manifesto, sorry, um, which, which could be, I think, very useful. So in the, in the round table, we will focus on uh, best practices. So I will ask our guests to share with us some best practices coming from different stakeholders because we have uh, public administrations, cultural and research centers, artists. So, a multi-stakeholder table, working with both in physical and virtual worlds, and now this project can be considered part of the new European Green Deal, uh, according to the pillars that the new European Bauhaus have stated, which are beautiful, sustainable, and uh, together. We have just heard uh, from uh, Javier Trussar about, uh, about these pillars, and this conversation will be also summarized and uh, delivered to the European Commission as uh, some more material to be discussed with to in this design phase of the new European Bauhaus. Uh, Daniel, I know that you, you, are, you are not European, at least not at the moment. You don't work in, uh, in Europe uh, at the moment, but uh, I think it will be very important also to have uh, another point of view, not directly coming from Europe, but uh, uh, enhancing this uh, Europe, uh, European feeling about that. Um, so we can, I guess we can start. We will, I will give you just seven minutes each one for this uh, first round. Uh, please describe shortly your organization and then let's go to the project, to, the, to describing an activity or a practice that you think is quite interesting for, uh, for the audience. And also, if you, want, if you have any questions, the, the panelists, but also the audience, feel, uh, please feel free to write the questions on the, on the chat. I will keep them for, uh, for the second round. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes uh, uh, not that uh, is joining to us the representative of uh, Barcelona City Council in uh, half an hour. That is Miguel Rodriguez Planas. That is uh, into the uh, Department of Innovation Agenda 2030. That means that uh, when he uh, will connect, we will give also the voice to do the presentation. And perhaps uh, because we have also three presentations here on a stage, perhaps we start with the people who is in Zoom and after uh, follow it by the our uh, partners here in the in the states is that that's okay this dynamic yes perfect so okay. I, I will i will uh, actually leave the stage to the creative director of leonardo isasta uh, mrs daniela sembiera uh, to start our conversation please daniel hi thank you all for having me here today just to give a really brief overview of leonardo leonardo is a enterprise creative think tank that looks at some of the critical issues that are addressing our world today. And we work towards impacts, uh, connecting artists, engineers, uh, philosophers, uh, creatives, scientists together to, to look at how we can solve some of those problems. And we do that through a full cycle creative engine. Uh, but I'm also here with another hat. I am also an artist uh, that works at that intersection of art, uh, the environment and community. And I recently worked on a project that I'm going to share that is really in the spirit of the European New Bauhaus. And um, give me a moment where I, where I get this up on the screen. You guys can see my screen right now. Okay, so this is a story that takes place in the western desert of the United States in a town called Gerlach, Nevada, that is the 
town that is known for the darkest sky in America. And in Gerlach, Nevada, there's around 700 acres of land that uh, one of uh, the largest arts uh, cultural organizations in the country, Burning Man, had, has purchased in order to create a sustainable village, uh, a, a place where uh, people can actually come and stay and have a conference. There'll be some people that will be living on site. And if you aren't familiar with Burning Man, it is uh, been around for several decades as a festival out in the middle of nowhere that leaves no trace behind. And there are some strong principles that are aligned with it around uh, radical generosity and curiosity and uh, regeneration, a lot of the similar principles that are part of the European New Bauhaus. Last year, they, they partnered with another really incredible uh, innovation or speculative uh, uh, organization called the Land Art Generator Initiative, which is an ideas competition similar to the new Bauhaus to look at how can we actually build um, public art that's, that's uh, regenerative, that, that's actually bringing in renewable energy. And so they put this competition together all for anyone who to participate from all over the world. And they said, okay, if you're going to uh, come to this site, what would you build for infrastructure? And you have to address some areas of um, areas that include the water, shelter, agriculture, uh, energy, and, uh, and and how do you actually make things regenerative? And addressing the issue of resource hungry on the site, and leaving no trace if possible uh, for a lot of the structures that came on the site. So there was this competition that came in play. Here's an example in this image here of uh, what they call as the geyser. And this is actually a man-made geyser uh, with some hot springs that were, on, that were on there from when they built a railroad nearby. And my team came together and decided to put together an, a new vision for this. We call this the, uh, the fly line, a journey within the mean. And in, in some ways, this is an, uh, an idea that is about creating a platform for future generations, really bringing in solar punk, um, bringing in the history of the indigenous uh, Paiute and, um, and in, in First Nations, people that lived on that site, the Burning Man artists uh, that have a lot of interest in creating a really um, special culture and art, and also the residents of, of, of that town of Gerlach, Nevada. And how can we actually create something that, gener that generates community, uh, that is something that is collective and also regenerative over the years. And so we created this, um, this boardwalk to help navigate the site. And uh, on our team, we had an engineer, a builder, uh, a generalist, and a, uh, a couple of architects. And then I came in as the artist. And so you can see uh, we use the Fibonacci curve and the golden mean uh, to really to, um, to connect in with that. And then we also started to think about, OK, what, do, what, what, do, what else does that experience encompass? And uh, we worked on creating a solar array uh, that actually painted colorful uh, moments along the boardwalk that were reflective of the environment but also disappeared at night. We didn't want to have anything that really gave out a lot of light pollution. In the corner here you can see there are some glittery blue and green sparkles that are laid out on the ground and that is the the actual boardwalk itself lights up and reflects what the night sky looks like and using uh, architectural models and regenerative models of of, of how we can actually uh, prevent people from treading on the land uh, while keeping it light and affordable and and renewable at the same time here are some other aspects of it um, there's some other pieces in here like uh, what we call resonant gate and that is a, um, a moment that you come into the space that actually in, enacts and engages with sound uh, that allows for um, indigenous performers, uh, electronic and uh, an acoustical artists to come in and ignite uh, an, a, an experience for somebody to walk down the fly line path and really um, connect with it on a, on a spiritual level and an emotional level. And also we had these platforms 
that we call uh, Pence and named after the, the uh, ind indigenous uh, site, uh, the Paonobi meaning water and allowed for people to both bathe and relax and have composable toilets and, and, and uh, resources there that you would need if you were going to be engaging in the hot springs, but also had an observatory and a bio lab and a place where you can actually collect um, uh, matter and actually be able to understand that on the site. So it also created a, it meant it as a learning center and did in a way that, that really allowed for programming to continue to be played on the actual platform. Um, so we created in a way some spaces that you see are, are empty here, but they're meant to be programmed by a cultural council, by the people who really um, are have built that land and will be using it that will allow for an addition of augmented reality, uh, connectivity and wayfinding to be inspired on the site. You could actually um, use this, uh, the, the larger platform to build temporary architecture uh, and there could be performances and journeys and ways to interact with the entire land, the, the entire 700 acres throughout the different special platforms on this uh, particular area. I'm not gonna go too much into the details of um, some of these other plinths and, and ways that you can actually really engage with the land in any direction. But what we put into this was a lot of thought about uh, how we wanna look at this for multiple generations and how we didn't want to um, articulate the, um, the design of the art and performances and communities that would be coming onto the site, but rather created it as a way that can create simulacra, uh, allowing for multiple realities to engage, um, for people to really um, uh, think about the past and the present, look up into the sky, look down into the ground and allow for the um, animals and vegetation to come in and out and sort of for there to be some harmony, but also with a little bit of speculation and a little bit of color uh, and uh, really encouraging sound and performance as really important venues in this. And it also generates quite a bit of energy. Part of the competition was how much energy you can generate. And I think um, we had around 400 kilowatts with our panel array. And what's not shown on site here is we also had a welcome center that you can use as a performance space that also had solar charging and uh, ways to actually um, clean your water and really encourage a really uh, iterative and generative moment as you enter the entire, uh, entire grounds. And just thinking through a lot of the team that we worked with on this project, there was a lot of moments where it was, we had to really come back and think about who we were designing this and um, where we needed to back off from and wanting to make sure that we're not, um, we're, we're not just adding in our aesthetic, but we thinking about um, those who, who are coming after us and those who were there before us. And that was a really, essential part of this particular design. And then there was a, a, a there was around two, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, we have uh, we have had some more min we had some more minutes. There are so this project is so astonishing, okay. uh, and there are so many questions to make. But if you are okay, I would just stop now at just to give the the words to the others, and we will come back with many questions to your projects because it, it really opens a lot of uh, different aspects about uh, uh, the discussion of today. If is that okay for you? Oh yeah, totally. No problem. I, I, I thank you for interrupting me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And so I will uh, just now give uh, the word to the curator of the City and Science Barcelona Biennial, uh, Dr. Pau Alcina. Pau, thank you for being here. Um, hello. Hello. How are you? N nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. I'm so happy to, to be here. Uh, I, I, I'm here in Barcelona. I don't live in Barcelona. I live in the town, right in the middle of the mall in the mountain next to Barcelona. So I was not able to get there because I have another meet later on. So anyway, I'm here, I'm very close to Barcelona right now. So happy to be here. Anyway, I will explain a little bit about what I'm doing. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a professor of uh, Open University of Catalonia, which is an online uh, university that started in 1994. 
uh, when nobody thought that the internet was going to get that bigger, that bigger. And since then, uh, right now we have almost 80,000 students, more than 70 or 80,000 students. That was, that was created for ensuring uh, that everybody could be able to have a, a, a university degree. Right now, it's, it's something. But I remember uh, Federico just just uh, quoted uh, Luciano Floridi, which is some someone that I I, I quite I read often. No? Uh, our chair of sociology and the minister of, of universities here in, Mar in in our university, it's Manuel Castells, which is a, a, a pretty well known sociologist that was the one that created this idea of the so uh, society of knowledge, society of, of information together with other sociologists and them. No? And he was telling how, how important this, in, this, this uh, overall situation between the virtual and the, and the presential back then 25 years ago, when everything started right? <laughs> at that moment, how, how important that, that was going to change and to interact and to, 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 to um, develop and evolve those different uh, uh, fields of knowledge. No? Those that are related with uh, um, those that are related with, uh, with different fields like um, the arts and the, the design, the philosophy, sociology, whatever. No? So at that moment, we, we started we started uh, a project that uh, uh, we started to create those different degrees uh, and master's degrees and PhDs and, and, and areas of knowledge that involve uh, creative uh, uh, creative uh, aspect no? No, in some way. And back then, 20 years ago, we, we, I, I created this uh, project which is called Art Notes Journal. That is, it's like the, the little brother, uh, Leonardo's uh, big brother, and I, we, are, we are the little brother here in Europe, in Barcelona, uh, that we have been 20 years uh, catching this, this art, science, and technology um, connection uh, together with also with the Spanish community, with the Spanish community and the Catalan community, and also the uh, Latin America community, which uh, in, for us is very important. We do feel we ha Barcelona is highly connected with the Latin America community. We do connect with Europe and with Latin America. We do share this this language and we share a ways of thinking and in this in this in this. so in some way we are like a bridge uh, like a like a bridge between different worlds different areas and also with the Mediterranean with Italian and all this these people uh, as a matter of fact we did create some project with with Leonardo this Jasmine uh, uh, list uh, that was back some years ago also too in order to connect those Mediterranean areas no? so we from from the teaching we move forward to the to the communities of knowledge uh, in this case with art notes which is a it's an online uh, journal, no? And then we move to to uh, to this uh, organization of uh, big events like the one that is going to start next week. That that's going to be. Uh, I'm just part of it. I'm just uh, one of the curators that is involved with this art and science connection. This is the science and the city biennial. That's that's a huge event that is gonna you know it's gonna uh, invite invade all the cities all the squares all the sorry all the cities all the squares and the streets of the Barcelona city everything will be in public discussion in the in the open space as well it's it's recommended no and in that moment we will we will talk about this art and science uh, connection uh, these uh, processes these methods and this this so from this. Uh, we we did plan to have this uh, this connection. Maybe I should uh, share the the screen of uh, if that's possible. Okay, I'm lost here. That does it. Is that? Oh, you see the the screen. Okay, okay. That's that's my university where everything started. That's the Art Notes Journal. I was telling you. Okay, this is the journal we started. We did just publish a, a current number on art in time of pandemic. We did try to do this together with Leonardo because we do share something. We did a previous edition with Leonardo together that, that was in, on artificial intelligence and, and arts, and uh, precisely the subject that is, is behind that. You know? And uh, this is the city panel. You can see the, the, the we, we do, uh, we have the, 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 the main theme will be uh, the limits. And this is going to start the 8th of, of June. This is next week. And uh, there's going to be a lot of, of art and science uh, activities there, connecting with technology in industries and society, for sure. And this is the next event that we are going to organize next year, 2021. This is the, the, the ICEA, the International Symposium of Electronic Arts, that is going to be organized here in Barcelona. 
with uh, several institutions, the universities and centers, cultural centers, and uh, uh, art centers, and many many collaborators from all over the city. Eh? And this is going to connect the international audiences of art, science, technology, society in Barcelona for these years, for this, for, for this, for next year during those days. No, originally it was planned to do it together with the science, but but we had to move. <laughs> and to uh, and to move it to 2022 and in order to to be more able to to do things as much presential as we we did really wanted to no? and the next and the last thing that i'm working on let's say that's the one that i was i was going to to tell you uh, as some as a main thing is this this uh, art science and technology hub that we are putting together here in barcelona together with different several institutions that are involved into that no? some two universities my university and the Pertengan University, which is a, a, technician, a technician university. Um, uh, uh, it, nine different research, science and technology research center, like the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, the Photonic Science uh, 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 Center, research center, the, the um, well, several several centers, eight, uh, uh, to the total amount of nine, uh, nine centers, of nine research centers. One um, uh, art production center. Um, well, different. This is these are the, all of the of the different organizations that are involved at the moment, trying to connect with other institutions like Esprancela, this one, or many other ones that are involved in this art, science, and technology area, with sharing this idea of togetherness, like, like New European Bauhaus. This idea of getting together all those different parts of the the same uh, uh, the same. Uh, uh, area of knowledge, uh, transversal knowledge, with an innovation that we are work, working on, and uh, also doing uh, doing uh, this thing as as beautiful, no, <laughs> beautiful because we do think this idea is quite beautiful to sharing things together and to to getting things together, and also to bring design, art, science, technology together in order to create this 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 communication, and also with an idea of sustainability, no, to try to 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 create a a, a space. Where the the whole is more than the, just the sum of the parts. When you can get more things getting to, doing to doing it together and do it in as a network and doing doing it as a as a as a as a, as a space uh, that you can share things and 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 create projects all together. No? This is something that is quite in the in the DNA of of uh, Barcelona City, where there is a, a strong uh, history of social movements and social networks and social so associations. And that's what we want to take to the lead on and to follow up this to track. And we do think that this is quite highly connected with this new European Bauhaus and, what, and, and with what you are all doing here with this, all these connections. No? So putting together you, all Paolo. those connections. Okay, so that's that's my time. And then I, I try to summarize everything in a, in a five minutes. Seven yeah, minutes. but we come back with some uh, more questions. Perfect, afterwards. that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, uh, Sita, Sita von Ork, project manager of V2, one of the partners, as Alejandro said, of uh, I for Future. Uh, I will just leave the, uh, the floor to you, Sita. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the presentations that were already shared. Very beautiful projects. Um, yeah, happy to be here. Also, always a bit strange to be kind of like digitally somewhere else while I'm still in the Netherlands because that's where I am at the moment. But it's nice to have this technology to also be in Barcelona at this moment, which is great. So um, yeah, maybe first a little bit about um, where I work. Uh, so my name is Sita, I'm a project manager at V2 Lab for the Unstable Media, which is based in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And V2 Lab um, is an interdisciplinary center for art and media technology. We present, produce, and archive research at the interface of art, technology, and society. And V2 was already founded in 1981. And we offer a platform for artists, designers, scientists, researchers, theorists, and developers of software and hardware from various disciplines to discuss work and share findings. Um, so in V2's view, art and design play really an essential role in the social embedding of technological developments. We try to create a context uh, where issues regarding the social impact of technology can be explored through critical dialogue, artistic reflection and practice oriented research. So um, there 
Yeah, there's a few projects that we have been working on um, during this pandemic, because this is also part of the world that we live in, that we, we, we are more online, right? So um, this is also a project that I would like to share, thinking about a hybrid project that's, that's really kind of the interface between the online and the offline and how these things are connected. So because V2 was founded in 1981, that means that we have a huge archive um, of projects, uh, exhibitions, works, residencies that we worked with and uh, on our website, uh, we document this archive so you can really go back to what already has been done. And from this, we kind of developed a new research line where we try to uh, look back to what already has been done in a different era, you could say, and then reenact what has happened or what kind of research or technology was then uh, being used in the now. So we try to uh, go back into the archive and then uh, make this again accessible in uh, our current area. So the growth of technology changes the potential and opportunities that technology offers to artists. And that's also why it can be very interesting to reflect on these technological artworks from the past and then to adapt or translate these works using our current means. So this is often the starting point for the collaborative residencies project, which is um, this project that I'm gonna talk about now. And we collaborate with InfoArt, which is another institute in Rotterdam, where we, uh, the artist that we work with, Marnik Senais, he chose one specific work from the V2 archive that he is now in a residency reenacting. So he's building um, a new form of this. And the, um, uh, the proposed reenactment that was chosen is called Telephonic Arm Wrestling. And this is actually a project that Norman White and Doug Beck originally realized already in 1986. And they showed it again in V2 at 2011. So there were kind of two moments. And uh, well, the name already says it a little bit, Telephonic Arm Wrestling is a collaborative telecommunication work by Norman White and Doug Beck. And the idea was to allow contestants in two different cities to actually arm wrestle using motorized force transmitted systems interconnected through a telephone data link. So the telephonic arm wrestling device enabled the participants located in two separate cities to actually arm wrestle using motorized mechanisms, which transmit and receive a kinesthetic information via the telephone line. This original work uh, was made on telephone signals, but when they presented it at V2 in 2011, this reinstallation used it the ethernet. And it was actually intended to be installed both in the White House and in the Kremlin, so that the presidents who then were Reagan and Gorbachev could settle their disputes through an arm wrestling rather than an argument. So it also had uh, a kind of a humor humoristic element to it. And I think this is something very interesting coming back to in this time, because often, even when we're now uh, conversing through this medium, Zoom, um, we never really use touch. Sometimes we use touch when we're in a virtual reality and we have these nunchucks or there, there is some kind of technology that allows you to kind of embody the technology more. Um, but we never really use that when we're conversing online. So telephonic arm wrestling deals with questions like how to communicate touch over a network and what does it actually mean to feel touch from a distance. It also questions communication patterns in the context of current topics and politics and almost 35 years later, which is now, Marnix and Nice, uh, so the artist who is doing the residency with us, will reenact this work with a new work that he's creating called TAST. And TAST uh, is a Dutch word, but it's also an acronym for transnational activation of simultaneous touch. And it's an investigation into tactility and how we can play with our senses as explorers of new perception. Um, yeah, so this work is still being developed. I can show a few pictures of what the old um, or the, the telephonic arm wrestling machine look like so that you kind of have an idea. Let me see if I can share my screen. 
Mm. Yeah, there we go. All right, so this here um, is what the telephonic arm wrestling machine looked like. So it was really uh, a telephone line and then it had this arm wrestling machine with a motor in it. And once you were connected through the same telephone line, the person who was on the other side could actually push and pull. So this is something very playful, but it also raises a lot of questions on how to relate to the person who's on the other side using your senses. And um, yeah, there's many, many, many different uh, ideas of and different projects that, uh, that were built during the years on how to kind of mingle and use the senses more in uh, artistic reflections on technology as well. So um, just to go through a few of these examples, maybe you know some of them. Um, yeah, going back also to haptic teleoperation, which is also back way back from a time before, uh, but has been already thought of. So all of these questions are again very relevant in the time that we currently live in, right? Because we are very much online. So um, yeah, the question would be how to embody this technology more and to create this sense of presence, this sense of telepresence through the computer without being physically in the same room. Yeah, so Thank you. Uh, yeah, sorry. I think that's it. It's more than enough for now. Okay, thank you very much for uh, the, the history of uh, the, the, the performances and the installations that you made and the rehancing of them. Uh, but I, I found very, very interesting. Um, yes, uh, perhaps now we could move the, to the, our panelists here in, the, in our space in Espronceda. I will invite first uh, Rosana Dinuzzo, that is the uh, responsible of uh, international projects and EU funding uh, projects, and is also one of the great partners in I, I for Future. Please, Rosana came to the States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. <laughs> And uh, ciao. Um, we are here in Esponseda, uh, but of course we are from MIT. Uh, MIT is the um, uh, digital culture center based in Milan, uh, which main aim is to reduce the digital divide through the digital culture and creativity. It, it comes from the Media Media Guru, that is an historical platform of ideas and events and supported them by Fondazione Caripo, that is one of the uh, biggest uh, uh, philanthropic foundations for, in Italy. And today, a MIT is an hybrid itself uh, space because it's a physical, beautiful space interconnected inside, but also connected outside through uh, streaming and VR platforms. And of course, through our international projects and uh, social media. And today I would like to, to, to present you uh, a project that is called uh, Augmented Europe. And uh, it is founded by the Social, uh, uh, social Stilty Euro European Programme. And uh, its main aim is to use the digital to enhance uh, social media, what we call social media casting. To, uh, to activate a transnational community of youngsters from several countries and specifically from four cities, from Milan, uh, Riga, Berlino, and uh, Thessaloniki, to um, co-create, uh, thanks to the support of design thinkers and also creative people, to co-create ideas and uh, strategies uh, to, to face uh, um, um, that, that are also the new European Bauhaus challenges. So uh, to face four many <clears throat> sorry challenges like climate change, social inclusion, uh, connecting people and places, and the future uh, jobs for the youngsters, uh, European youngsters. And we um, worked for during one year 
through these uh, ideatons. So each city organized an impressions, but also um, digital ideaton. And uh, through this process, we created a community of about 700 youngsters from uh, these countries, these four countries and beyond. And, um, and then we have the last chapter. I don't know if you could uh, share the screen, no? Because I said, okay, no, no, it's, it's okay, it's, it's okay. And um, because uh, um, the 14th of June, we have this uh, last hybrid event, where whole this community of the youngsters will, and together with artists, will meet the last time to co-create the final chapter of this uh, big narration that then will be also, um, Transform in a social in a poli in a policy recommendation that will spread throughout the new European Bauhaus because this is a project that meet promoted as partner of uh, the new European Bauhaus. This is uh, my presentation. I don't know if you have to, any questions. <laughs> Thank you, Rosanna. We will come back to your to the questions later, maybe. Ah, okay after the first uh, round. Thank you very much, Rosanna. Yes, what we are going to do is to uh, sit all together in front, but uh, now we go one by one. And now I will ask uh, Mariana from uh, Transit Projectors that will present us also uh, a wonderful initiative because they they have a large experience in, in management of cultural projects and also running uh, cultural institutions. Please, Mariana, your turn. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Hello, the ones who are not here. Hello, I'll <laughs> say hello that way. Um, thank you very much for inviting us. Uh, I will try to share uh, the screen. It's not that I have lots of contents, but maybe some pictures that can illustrate what I will uh, speak about. Just two seconds, if I can do it. And if not, we will just skip it. No. Okay, I'm not sure if you, uh, it's, maybe it's a bit small. I think it's a bit small. I don't know if you can see anything, but anyway, I'll just put it that way. Um, okay, so uh, I'm here representing Transit Projectors. Uh, Transit is a private agency that's been working for the last 30 years almost, uh, basically in Barcelona and surroundings, uh, to facilitate the access of cultural uh, capital. So we're working in a super wide range of different projects. Uh, we're based uh, in Barcelona, um, but also we work uh, in Spain. We have a large number of European uh, projects and also uh, strong links with, uh, with Latin America. So uh, let's say we work, I won't say worldwide, but internationally at least. Um, and as uh, I said, uh, we work in very, very different uh, kind of projects, uh, as Alejandro was introducing, um, uh, we do manage cultural facilities, which means cultural centers, uh, music schools, um, creation centers, um, residences or other. Um, but also we go through research, uh, innovation and consultancy in, in cultural projects. And then uh, let's say from, from managing public cultural facilities to having this new space we opened in L'Hospitalet, which is a prototyping and, and innovation space where we create, we prove things, we test, we make mistakes and we have lots of fun. <laughs> um, but the, the, the main thing is that this space called Planta Uno is now uh, has been brought up by three organizations that are Transit, Steps, and ITD, which were to work together. Um, and it's there to build also communities around it. And this word communities is very important for us. 
Um, as we manage and we and we deal with quite different projects, I will go through the the using the the pillars. Uh, I will just mention some some projects to like show the the, the scope. Of course, we're working in culture. Beautiful is kind of part of it, uh, but we are not seeking for 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 beautifulness, but we find it almost everywhere. Um, uh, in, 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 in the sense of, of, of the artistic work, we give support to artists in different uh, kind of uh, levels. In one hand, uh, of course, uh, we go, we do training in different in different uh, topics. Uh, we have the teams of the cultural centers giving support in production, in in research, etc. Um, we also um, mediate in different programs, trying to strengthen the ecosystems in different territories. So we, and again, I'll be reiterative in this word, we try to build communities. Um, we also, uh, as Alejandro said before, uh, we are organizing together with Esplanceda the, the workshop this afternoon, which is Thinking is Beautiful. Um, uh, and this workshop will be um, basically trying to address some interesting key topics like how do we build new meanings and new contents in a world crossed by technology? So how do we deal with these new values and how do we add value in this uh, technological um, environment. Um, I'll be very fast because uh, five minutes is it's short. Um, sustainability. I would uh, I would insist that we uh, conceive sustainability uh, basically uh, like having to do with the creation and handling of communities around projects. Um, we do believe in having allies, in having partners, and and building together whatever makes it more sustainable than building it alone. Um, so we build and we work to engage communities with common values and, and address, address um, uh, common challenges. I would, like to, I would like to also state that we do have more, let's say greenish sustainable projects, uh, working with cultural, um, sorry, with the circular uh, economy and uh, recycling, etc. Uh, we do have, uh, for example, uh, a strong line re uh, related to maker spaces, which we have developed for the last uh, for the last years, um, that uh, has allowed us to to research and to deepen all that has to do with the STEAM vocations: science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Um, so now we're basically working on that, but trying to get it out of these kind of maker spaces, working uh, hand by hand with public libraries, with schools, with um, uh, creation centers, now working with heritage works, for instance, um, with communities like elderly people. So this digital techie thing suddenly becomes something that it's much more closer uh, and that, that uh, really, um, has to do with with uh, with enhancing these vocations and also bridging the the gender gap in these team vocations. Um, the 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 other thing is that uh, um, we always have in mind the sustainable um, development goals of the Agenda 2030. So um, this is an example of, of a game we're developing. It's a game, it's a card game, but it will be also a digital game where we uh, make communities interact and, and discuss around mega trends that are right now uh, crossing our reality. That could be environmental uh, technology, um, food, um, sustainability, culture, etc. But then we cross it with this SDG thing. So we always have this uh, sustainable development goals in mind. And you can see also that in our blog because we've been de developing and trying to uh, make visible how our projects that we've been developing for the last years are also SDG oriented and how culture is really uh, helping to develop this SDG. Uh, and finally, 
when we talk about together, a couple of examples on that. Um, we do, as I said, believe strongly in partnerships, in communities, in working together. Um, so we never work alone. Um, we develop and we work in developing processes more than results um, uh, that may lead to social transformation. Uh, and we do believe our work strengthens uh, social cohesion. So we're working with youngsters, we're working with elderly people, etc. And this photo is, is, is one of the EMCA, which is the music and art schools from L'Hospitalet, which has been awarded with a prize of, of um, the ARPACT uh, program of the EU uh, for his contribution uh, to social cohesion through the, through the development, development of arts. And finally, um, just to an, an example, this uh, is, is our last uh, editorial adventure. Uh, this is Queremos Sonreir means uh, we like to smile. And this started identifying a series of organizations and artists working around Spain uh, um, in projects that uh, really centered in activating lo uh, local culture. Uh, so we worked with them, we developed contents, we firstly uh, made an online uh, uh, training, but it ended up in this, in this, um, in this book uh, that basically shows us or, or makes us think on how to really uh, incorporate different layers to make our projects, our cultural projects, projects more linked with our local communities. So this is a super wide uh, range of things for you to have an idea on what we do. Uh, we are happy, of course, to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mariana. And thank you for being on time. And uh, now, uh, last but not least, Martin Romeo, an artist, a media artist. And uh, um, I think you also have some uh, screen to share. So please, the floor yeah. is yours, Martin. Thank you. Hello, hello you. Uh, hello, nice to meet you. And uh, thank you to Alejandro to invite me. Let's see in just a moment. Okay. Okay, I'm going to share. Okay, you can see, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> but just a moment because there are other two. So let's see if this one can. Wait a moment. This one, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, probably I will give you a pilot uh, about uh, my uh, introduction. Um, I am an artist, yes, I work with uh, data, um, aesthetics, different stuff. Uh, I like to work with, uh, for example, uh, clouds and uh, weather data, and then carbon and dioxide. Um, to then uh, give them a aesthetic uh, and form shape in the environment. The project that I will uh, present today is uh, my last project, and it's called "In This Love, in this love Together," um, the last um, on uh, accessibility of the relationship uh, between uh, different species, um, like animal and plants. The um, mm, the dialogue, creative dialogue, uh, want to lead to improvement of um, from personal point of view to collective uh, perception. And the installation um, one remark to uh, given the design 
um, underline this uh, topic so biodiversity right especially with the mutualism phenomena where for example i take this example that i show you um different uh, in fact uh, species start to match each other like a wasp and flower give life uh, a fig but there are other kind of um, creation in nature like that i like a lot um, this um this i mean process from a from one kind of structure and, and then the positive creation so for example that they said um they give life to a fig from these two different species uh, for example there are others like mushroom from a hand etc so um the installation is uh, composed by two parts. One is this moment of the transformation that is fixed. Um, is a fixed in, uh, in this sculpture that is made in bronze. I decided to do it, do it, do it uh, in bronze because help me to uh, give value um, because the material help me to give value to this uh, ecosystem. So to, to the concept, okay. And um, you can how you can see it in this uh, sculpture there is the the mix of uh, all of kind of uh, uh, species or uh, animal and plants. The other hand, we have this one, um, where is the dynamic process of this giving life. Uh, it's um, in action, that right now is just an image, but it's something that is moved, okay? And there are, in fact, this interaction is happening uh, thanks to electromagnetic and ferrofluid, where in fact, this ferrofluid start to be Changes the um, thing to the movement of itself in the in this uh, in this bell. So I think this collaboration with all these varieties and, and the creation that can be triggered by the union of them, I compare with our relationship with uh, artificial intelligence in the sense to resolve to find a solution uh, urgent issues uh, connected more than ever uh, with the environment. So uh, at the end, um, this project wants to um, bring the user okay, to more uh, awareness how the whole system, biodiversity system is um, necessary and how they work. I mean, I, I like to work with the uh, imperceptible things uh, that uh, really can understand because you can see in them. Um, so I like to, to, to put my attention on all these phenomena uh, in the way to, to analyze better the war, understand and read the, the, better the war and how we know it, because at the end they represent all the things that we see and perceive. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. Uh, so now we have uh, like one hour, so it, we're, we're perfectly on time. Uh, and then I will actually go back. Uh, do, uh, I, I actually, uh, I, I will not uh, uh, be able to get some questions from the audience. So if uh, there are some questions from the audience, uh, I would ask then Alejandro to, um, to deliver them. And... Uh, I would just start again from Daniel. Uh, yes, a, a, a moment. Uh, we are waiting always the our guest from the city council. I think he's sure. coming in some minutes. And also what we will do, we will uh, uh, sit together in front of the camera here. Yes. In this way, we could uh, also be part of the conversation. Okay, just, just a minute and we put all together here in front of you. Let's Thank you. Thank you. Okay, go ahead with the with the questions. Thank you very much.
Shall we, shall we start or? Okay. So, hi again, Daniel. Uh, we we uh, were discussing before with uh, Javier Trussar about the fact that uh, enterprises are uh, slowly entering the new European house because in Europe, the way in which we think uh, of the uh, art and science works uh, is still a more interesting NGOs and uh, public administration and not business uh, administration. So we get funding mainly from research centers, public administration, all the public system. While I guess your astonishing project has had many different fundings and many different people coming to intervene with a multi-stakeholder project. This is very important in my opinion, because we cannot just, uh, we, we have to involve as many people as we can and as many stakeholders as we can in building uh, systemic projects as the one you, uh, you built. So my first question is actually how you manage uh, to involve different uh, funders and stakeholders, not just with the money, you know, but also with all the uh, other kind of resources, uh, uh, time, expertise, uh, etc. And the other question is, uh, uh, if you were the leading uh, director of the project, you are an artist, you are a woman, I know it's different, in uh, US is different from uh, Europe, but uh, it would be very difficult in Europe to lead a, a technical team of engineers, male, uh, for, for this kind of project. So I also want to have some more perspective from you, about you managed to gather all these people and to, uh, to be the leader, despite the fact that you uh, belong to a kind of a marginal world in the perspective of some white uh, white men working in uh, programming and engineering. Thank you. So there are sort of two questions here, um, and they're both relatively interesting. And I think one is around like how do you actually then build these collaborative teams and build the stakeholders to really come into the same space. And it, it, this is nothing that's done overnight. And I think a lot of it has to do with uh, a, a, a really a transformation of mindset for uh, how foundations and companies and movements and cultural organizations uh, feel like they can contribute and have agency and and how and what they want to support. I think there is this 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 really uh, uptick movement in the US and in the EU and other and other parts of the world around creating a generational infrastructure that's uh, really uh, also addressing some of the systemic problems that have occurred in the past. I think that once um, institutions had, and companies and, and foundations, and I mean, no sector is really avoiding the, it, it is, is, um, uh, is uh, innocent from this, but we've all sort of contributed to a systemic problem uh, of uh, land, uh, especially, uh, you know, we've uh, taken land from indigenous communities, uh, we've enslaved people, we've conquered places, um, we've colonized locations. And because of that, uh, the infrastructure and the design is really coming from a, a real singular perspective and not rooted from that from that ground up. And same with understanding how we're relating to the plant, to the earth that the land is part of. Um, I'm gonna talk more about the, the team that we put together rather than some of those other systemic issues, because I think that could be an entire uh, you know, multi-session event. But it really has to do with uh, uh, meeting people and actually starting to, to, to find where the, that common ground is. Uh, you know, the, the architects and builders, uh, where, where I'm located, they're, they're very much into uh, connecting a renewable and green energy. And this is a I've been wanting to uh, do something to, for the land our generator competition for multiple years. So this team was actually built uh, several years prior. Uh, you know, we had talked with each other, we've met with each other and said, you know, there's gonna be this competition. We know it's gonna come up. We should think about what we wanna do together. And it had to do with uh, building trust. A lot of things are around building trust at the beginning, um, but the team we put it together it, it was around designing charrettes, um, really uh, talking about 
uh, where our different skill sets could contribute and join in. Uh, I, I just happened to be very the one that was really kind of pushing for uh, everyone to join together and to organize, but but everyone really did contribute quite a bit to the ideation and to the science and the engineering and the understanding of it, and really being able to gel with those values and to have that that chemistry and that ability to do it. We spent about ten months working on it, um, so it wasn't that was something that we just did in a, um, a, a short amount of time, but we really. Uh, spent every week or, or every other week for almost a year uh, putting this together. And so um, the issue of me being a woman never really came up, but we did talk about that it was still um, not bringing in the everyone that we could have brought in, like more uh, people who are indigenous to that to that community, um, the Paiute um, and um, Washa tribe, tribal folks and integrated into the system and also the people from um, Gerlach, Nevada. I think you have to really think about who you're really um, designing with uh, at that and at the onset. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone who has some questions? I know that Miguel Rodriguez has just arrived. Hello, Miguel. Hello, oh. hello, Miguel. Welcome. Uh, I think perhaps we could uh, follow the presentations before continuing the the conversations because uh, we miss it, uh, Miguel. Why not? In the, so, in the round of presentations. So Please, yes. Please. Okay. So so thank you thank you for for inviting me here inviting the City Council of Barcelona in this in this debate in this session and I thank you for adapting the agenda to the fact that I had uh, issues with my personal agenda today. Okay, so when when we talk about the new Bauhaus, uh, we, we understand it, at least from our side, as the added value that makes the European New Green Deal a project that goes, I would say, beyond the reduction of greenhouse gases emissions and, and beyond all the deployment of, 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 of investments uh, into, into, into specific policies. No, the, the, the new Bauhaus is the will to include the creativity in Iran in the cultural movement and the creativity that arises from the design sector. I would say that this, the translation of this blooming of creativity in our day to day life in the complexity of cities, in the reality and challenging issue of day to day of city councils is challenging, but it's feasible. And, and, and the key element is to be clear that the benefits of, of, I would say, innovation are worth more than the difficulties of its implementation. Because when, when we talk about creativity, at the end, we're talking about innovation, about the will to do things in a different way, to get a better result than with the previous way to do it. And this is something that we are doing in Barcelona, that we are doing for, for the, the last years in Barcelona, the will, the, uh, the, the deployment of a set of innovative solutions with, with one clear goal, the will to reach the 2030 agenda. Because when we talk about the 17 SDGs, the 169 targets below below the, the sustainable development goals, uh, when we when we talk about this, it, it, we can see that they are a clear path to reach the European New Green Deal, as the 2030 agenda is in brief a strategic plan that shows us the way to get a sustainable future for all, and in that sense, innovation is crucial to reach this agenda because we don't have time to waste and therefore we need innovation to innovative solutions that allow us to deploy the policies faster than, than, than we did before, that, we have, that we're doing right now. And therefore, innovation is at the heart of the policies implemented by the Barcelona City Council. Some of these innovations might be sounded like the super blocks where we are working to, to try to balance the environmental sustainability with the creation of wealth as pedestrianization has a clear benefit on the retail sector. But if I if I may, I would like just to briefly point four more innovative policies that we are deploying in, in, in Barcelona and, and, and shows the will that 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 what we're doing it's completely linked linked with the spirit of the of the new Bauhaus. Well, one of these of these innovative policies it's fair digital transition and technological humanism. Uh, we are working very hard in guaranteeing a better 
digital transition for all with uh, implementing deploying tablets to reduce working and educate educative inequalities in 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 uh, in, in specific uh, inhabitants of, of the city or for example helping all our retail sector a local a very local and traditional retail sector to move into the digital dimension and help them to be competitive not only in the physical dimension of life but also in the digital one and, and regarding technological humanism, because we understand that at the end, we will need to be different in the way we use technology. Barcelona has just signed a digital, digital, a digital rights chart together with other European cities. And in this chart, we basically put the, the, the basis uh, to guarantee the correct use of, 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 of digital the, uh, devices and, and, and digital culture. Another another policy that innovative policy that we are implementing is transfer is the will to transfer the knowledge that we have in our city Barcelona is a city with several top universities several top business schools with very strong research centers and what we want is to transfer this knowledge to the SMEs to help them to enhance the incorporation of innovation in their activities so they should be able to have added value in their activities and be more competitive. So in that sense, we're working a very innovative way by financing, helping financing um, innovation from the public sector together with the private sector. Also, in, in terms of financial innovation, we're working also to increase the production of solar energy by creating a public-private fund to invest in the installation of solar panels in our roof, uh, a, a public-private fund that in, will will represent the overhaul of the of the investment. So the 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 owners of the buildings will not need to pay for the investment. So we will offer them for for free, and 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 another uh, and, and 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 together with this innovation fund, we hope to reach. Uh, uh, and an and energy production of 83 uh, megawatts and this might be some strains of, of numbers but at the end is the equivalent of reducing our co2 emissions by 34,000 tons or the equivalent of uh, taking out of our cities of the, our streets 19,000 cars and finally another 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 policy innovative policy that we're deploying it's trying to implement pilots of innovative solutions to overcome day-to-day -day challenges in the cities. We just raised one regarding uh, solar panels in the streets, how we can create energy in the streets, but we're working on having more facilities in, a, in, in the, in, for, the, for visitants that have uh, problems, sensory problems, or, problem, or, or other solutions regarding park systems for uh, people that have special needs and et cetera, et cetera. I think that in brief, when we talk about the new, the new green, the new Bauhaus, we're talking about innovation and, and it's the key element. And in that sense, Barcelona is totally aligned with the, with the will of implementing of this innovation. And we want to be part of this project because we understand that we have to work together all together to guarantee a sustainable future for all in the next years. And that that would be all. I think that from here we can we can have a, a discussion. Thank you, Mikel. Uh, so we uh, we go back to Paul Sina, that has just presented us the the the, the new project, the Head Tech. Is that the name? The correct spelling, Head, head Tech. Um, yes, this is this act. Uh, this is a hub. Uh, so what's the question? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just, just, uh, just to know if I was uh, pronouncing it correctly. Uh, and I, uh, the question for me uh, on my side would be, uh, uh, be uh, amongst the beautiful, uh, sustainable and together in uh, planning and designing the new project that you have in mind, which is the most difficult one to achieve, uh, considering uh, the three, uh, also the, the, the multi-stakeholder approach that you are having uh, in, uh, in your project. The most difficult thing to, think to uh, the most, which is the most difficult thing that we should address. Um, yes, I, I guess that um, the balance, the balance between the different 
uh, wheels, different uh, objectives, the, the different uh, tends tends towards what we are doing all together. I think that I think that the, what's new European Bauhaus about? I think it's the, it's also about the balance between the uh, the industry, the experimentation, the citizens, the society, the arts, cre art, create creative arts, and everything. So I guess. That's the main thing because while we, well, well, I think that the idea that is behind that, and I do think really uh, reflected on that, is that that uh, um, there is an hybrid space that we all want to share. Hybrid space, hybrid knowledge, uh, vision, hybrid uh, um, institution that in somehow we are we are configuring, we are we are creating all together. Uh, universities needs to evolve. From what university is supposed to be, uh, because knowledge is not anymore just in the universities. Industries they also do need to 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 get connected with uh, with universities, but also with society and with with uh, uh, citizens. Um, the same the same way industry um, industry in this way citizens uh, they do want to share and they do want to to have uh, involved to get involved in in citizen projects uh, and uh, like like for example the citizen science projects and participatory uh, evolution because they no one want to be just uh, uh, you know quiet and shut up they do want to get involved into into things no and also the cities of course the cities need to to foster this this transversality and these connections between all those different fields i think we are in a really good moment right now uh, of openness openness of the institutions towards this idea of, of getting outside of the box, thinking about outside the box, thinking, thinking outside their own limits, no? getting, getting connected with all those different things. Not just because maybe after this, if it could be that maybe something good that could be came out from these pandemics is that we do need to think, to, to we do think uh, we are inter interdependent. We do depend on each other. And we do think that there is a connection between between the, the, the environment, the institutions, the people, and those different aspects of, of, of the ecosystem. This idea of the ecosystem and how these things are getting together all together. So this notion of interdependence um, opens up op, open up the barriers of the institutions, but also the, the knowledge barriers that we do think, you know, from different fields. Okay, uh, there is more interdisciplinarity, more interconnectors within those different fields and also with a with a with a view with an, an image of knowledge that it's far away from this idea from the modernity where the, there's just those some big huge institutions that they do have all the knowledge and they share it to citizens no this this there is a togetherness within those different uh, uh, with, with this idea of ecosystem where they have those different levels of of uh, of uh, people involved, getting involved, no different institutions, but the big ones, the little ones, the, the collective that are alternative, but also the ones that are highly connected with industries and with, with commercial part of it. No? So these things, this are, has evolved. No? And the key thing in order to collaborate and to get these things all together is to, um, to get a balance, a correct balance between all those different uh, things. No? Because that means respecting each other's understanding the value which that could that each one of us could bring us to the whole uh, to the whole that we are getting together and 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 connecting in a in a will towards getting in far away from more far away than than we are we could we could have gone all just by ourselves let's say yeah? so I think this is maybe an answer to what you said I don't know maybe it is, it is indeed. Uh... Because yeah, and probably what, what we did uh, was uh, in the past giving more power or more uh, uh, more uh, weight to one of the three elements uh, in the different sectors. And now the real challenge is uh, was uh, a very interesting position, uh, like to find in the post anthropocentric world not just one of them, but to find how the dialogue can be can be done. So yes, thank you, um, Sita. Uh, you, your project was uh, very fascinating to me because, uh, of course, it's ironic, uh, but but not only uh, as artists can uh, can be 
just maybe just artists can be, can open uh, uh, different layers of meaning. So I was uh, thinking about how different perceptions and uh, so not only the site that we used a lot in our, uh, with Zoom and with, uh, uh, with all these digital tools, but even other senses like the touch that the, um, we consider a minor sense uh, usually, or we don't really uh, pay attention because the site is always one of the most, uh, uh, the most uh, uh, powerful and uh, dominant ones. But uh, in the digital, uh, in our digital lockdowns, uh, if we had some machines like the ones that uh, uh, the artists at V2 Lab produced, uh, we would have felt less lonely probably, and we would have uh, uh, understood many more things, uh, uh, not just uh, so for important people like uh, the president of uh, Russia and, uh, and uh, uh, United States, but even for all of us. And so I think, uh, since you are also a research center, I was wondering if uh, uh, if you are planning uh, to and sorry, and this brings to accessibility to technology because uh, if uh, some people don't have some senses uh, like the sight or uh, the or uh, the, the sound, they can use other senses, and so art can also be inclusive and access and create uh, access in this sense. So, as a research center, uh, have you ever uh, followed up your projects from artistic projects or other possibilities that these artistic projects can lead to um, scientific centers and to open other possibilities? which become maybe viable products or not even that, but viable new ways of thinking? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, super interesting to think about because uh, I think the connections also, uh, what was just mentioned about this ecosystem and uh, creating a dialogue between different disciplines is uh, something very valuable and Definitely when it comes to artistic research, uh, where a project that, that like the, the arm wrestling machine can be also seen as, would be very interesting to see how this can be part of a deeper research and just like you share, maybe create new connections and new possibilities for um, new kind of, maybe not business models, but new kind of dialogues within the society on how we see inclusiveness. So most of the projects that we start at V2 that we're a part of, um, they really, they're kind of created to start a dialogue. So between the artists, but also between academics and also very much between the municipality uh, for us locally in Rotterdam. So we work also together with the municipality in Rotterdam. And these connections are super very valuable because we start a conversation from this artistic, sometimes humoristic, sometimes very uh, weird projects, but they, they engage people, citizens that come in, academics, artists, activists to come together and share their knowledge about this. So really creating this interconnectedness and then using that as a platform to further develop the research, maybe within the municipality. So we're working together on a project of smart cities. So then the municipality comes with a question. So how can we envision alternative futures for smart city development? Instead of only having corporates think about how they can build technology that is then again applied to the city. So instead of going from top to bottom, um, creating a dialogue that it becomes bottom up, so it becomes more grassrooted, also within the municipality. And then again, to bring it back to the community from there. So maybe using these new insights into um, new rules in the city, new technologies, but really community based. So really trying to envision these alternative ways of having a dialogue, alternative ways of using technology in a way that is more bottom-up and more community-based, which is, I think we can all agree, something very important in this time as we see that everything is actually interdependent of each other. And uh, projects like this are just, they're like a small seed almost like planted, like, ah, oh, this, this could be like something new. And then from there we see the dialogue emerging. Um, and that is beautiful to see. That's something that, that we are very much uh, interested in SV2 and has also been developing through the years. 
right? The different uh, organizations and municipalities and businesses and organizations, they see these projects and they can connect. And then from there, it's like a springboard to, uh, to other applications, which is very valuable, yeah. Yes, thank you, Danielle. You are posting uh, some uh, suggestions, and uh, the last is the last one um, a question: How we can act the city? No, there are some examples of uh, cities inviting citywide rapid prototyping. Do you want to say two words more about that? I would just uh, you uh, just some of the things that were just coming up as you were uh, talking about. Uh, how you create these ground swells with like urban development and and, and urban planning and and, and civic um, connection. There are some great examples of this uh, in the past. Uh, in San Francisco, there was uh, this uh, program called Summer Smart, which then turned into uh, the Rapid Prototyping Festival, where the city had uh, open up all of their departments and started to put all their data online. And this was really actually incredibly important. I think cities can do this. And the result of this was they had these hackathons. They brought journalists and artists and community members and developers together. And they did this summer long charrettes of these hackathons with these different departments data. So transportation data, um, uh, data for uh, healthy human services, uh, things that were of course not exposing people's privacy, but allowed for people to start to think about what is the story around this? What is the story for our city going forward? And then um, the subsequent years, they created these rapid prototyping festivals where they closed off the section of the city and allowed for um, collaborative art side teams to come in and do different um, urban development prototypes that were very um, easy to test out. And today, the city data is still available online, and there's all these civic groups now that are coming together and looking at city data and how they can actually um, talk about those and design those and how those could be part of a narrative. And I think that's a really you know, important part of thinking about that development. Um, similarly, with uh, working around uh, people with disabilities, we just launched a new program called the Crypt Tech Incubator. That's like a, a, a full program to support uh, art, artists um, who find who, who identify themselves as disabled, who are working in technology to really build up that technology that they've already in a lot of ways um, designed and hacked um, because either cities or companies or universities are, are not creating that, that technology for them. They are doing that on their own. And this is really to provide that venue and avenue to make that happen. Yes, thank you. That, that's very important. And it's very linked to artificial intelligence for future to our project too, because we are talking about activists actually. And these are activists uh, in, uh, because they, uh, they present themselves, they are uh, disabled people and they said, okay, we, uh, we want to uh, co-design co with, with other people the, 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 the prototypes that uh, are good for us and we start uh, expressing as a main characters what we need. So starting from the bottom, instead of uh, asking someone else what they need and uh, being someone else to tell them what they need. So. I think this example that you made uh, is uh, very, very linked and very powerful for our research too in our project. Uh, do you have any other question about this? Or I would ask uh, Rosanna a question more about uh, the social media casting if, uh, uh, because we are in, in i for future uh, we are tackling a lot of young activists and uh, Rosanna was talking about a project, this social media casting, a project dealing with youngsters, with the teenagers, this famous uh, uh, entity, which are teenagers. We, we talk a lot about teenagers, but we don't uh, still know much about them uh, in many ways because they flee, they go away, they escape, they really don't want to be seen by adults many times. They just want to do things by themselves uh because they are discovering themselves and they, they don't want us to tell them what to do so but since rosanna you you uh you said you had something like 700 uh, uh, people joining um the, the 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 social media casting so i just want to know if there is any insight do you have an insight about these teenagers these 
relationship, which is probably very normal for them between the real world and the virtual world. So they live online and offline much uh, easily than uh, um, most, most of us that are uh, sitting here. We have no teenagers at the table, unfortunately, to this time. Uh, so please, Rosanna, I don't know if you can tell us a bit more about that. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you for the question. And uh, yes, it was uh, our challenge to, to reach them, uh, to reach them and to get them uh, involved and um, ask them to, to actively participating. And uh, actually the, the, the use, the exploration of the social media casting that is a mix of social media that could activate the participation was um, was the key of this uh, of this project because uh, um, when we talk of social media, for example, at Meet we we talk of social media and the young generations at two main levels. So in terms of media literacy and the media awareness, so we are exploring the programs to 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 try to to make youngsters aware of the risk of social media in terms of uh, fake news, deep fakes, and so on. And that was uh, also very interesting. We, we, we worked with several schools, with a lot of students. Uh, and uh, what do we can say that uh, young people want to be heard, wants to participate. And of course, they are very uh, familiar and confident when, when we talk uh, when we activate them through social media, they are we, we are they, they are digital native. We are digital immigrants on this, so they can teach us a lot of things. Um, but on on the same time, they will, they also want to 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 come back to the real world, to the physical world. That's why we decide to, to organize this last uh, event physically. And uh, we are, of course, receiving a lot of uh, um, uh, positive answers and feedbacks uh, because, um, because of the, the, the digital, the social media could, uh, because there is also a topic of uh, potential digital exclusion, as we saw also during the, the pandemic. That's why um, MIT is a, a physical place also where we invite uh, citizens and the young people to access, for example, VR station and the technologies to to, to, to access this world and uh, be, becoming more and more aware of the potentialities uh, of the risks and enhancing the, the power of uh, participation that, that was the main aim of uh, Augmented Europe, that was a participation, a transnational participation. Uh, so yes, we, 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 we are trying to win this uh, challenge uh, and um, having uh, lots of, of youngsters participating also thanks to our partners that are cultural centers from Riga, Berlin, Saloniko that work very, um, very hard to, 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 to keep this community uh, involved. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Rosanna. And I will, uh, I will ask uh, a question to Marianne, uh, because I was uh, very impressed uh, by the first sentence, which I find, I mean, very, very fascinating. We don't look for beauty, we find it somewhere. Uh, and since, uh, um, since uh, uh, the new European Bauhaus is about also uh, beautiful, so I want to understand more a bit of the processes uh, that uh, you use in your organization for discovering beauty in the corners where you don't expect it, uh, because the the, the 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 meaning of beauty it's okay. I'm opening a big discussion, so uh, you start where, uh, wherever you want from, just from your experience, and to under, because we have to understand where we can find beauty somehow since we talk about it. Yeah, well, you're opening a big, a big melon, as we say here. <laughs> this is a big issue because, of course, um, beauty is 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 um, uh, it's not objective. 
so we, uh, the, the person who looks might find beauty in different in different in different places. I said we don't work for uh, looking for beauty because, of course, uh, our our perception of working with communities is uh, giving them access to uh, cultural goods, cultural services, cultural experiences, building uh, what Daniela said. What, that that's a super interesting and super important word: building trust also in relationships in relationships to build together to construct to create to think on possible futures so in this in this path of course we're not um, looking or we're not working with artists to have a beautiful uh, a, a beautiful show or a beautiful uh, performance necessarily we're working with communities and of course we might find beautiful experiences beautiful histories beautiful beautiful artworks uh but not but i, I insist we're not looking for that we're not uh we're not training artists to make beautiful things we're trying to um catch and to grab all the knowledge and all the beauty in communities and to raise them up so that's why i said we're not working on community on for beautiful making beautiful things um and i wanted to add just because the previous question like links a bit with, on, on what we do also um we have a couple we have had in the last years a couple of of, uh, of European projects linked with youngsters, as you said, they are the big deal. How to how to catch them and and how to keep them. Uh, uh, and our experience is that uh, we've been working also in social social media, trying to stay hate, stop hate speech and fake news and all these kind of things. And one way we find out. Of course, reaching them is difficult, but then giving them the voice and the um, tools to create things by themselves and show them to the others is a way they like very much to engage to a project. I mean, they don't want to listen things, they want to say things and say it creatively by videos, by uh, artworks or whatever. It's, it's kind of the way we have find to get them uh, engaged. I'm not sure if I answered, but that's my idea. Yes, thank you, Mariana. Thank you very much. And uh, then, uh, Martin, uh, I was uh, uh, listening to, to the presentation of your work that I actually knew before, but it was very interesting to hear uh, again from another perspective. And I wanted to ask you, um, um, we are in this uh, so-called, or we are trying to be in this so-called post-anthropocenic uh, era. Uh, and we talk about that with uh, Pau before that the, the importance of this balance uh, uh, to overcome the, the Anthropocene uh, era. Uh, what can uh, uh, animals and plants in your experiences, you studied it for your artistic project, can teach us uh, uh, to come out and to create this balance um, since we are still in this process and we have no clear ideas about how to uh, reach this balance in our lives? So. Yeah, um, that is a big question, but I try to make an example. I think all we ask, uh, know uh, about the uh, NFT, right? Uh, the new bubble that's growing, 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 and we don't really know what will be happen after we, that will be the, the boom. So um, I like I like this new alternative system, no? That is alternative, so it's disconnected of the um, the traditional one. I mean, more connected with this uh, art system, uh, the ocean. Um, and that kind of thing. I mean, there are people behind the thing that choose, no? Uh, choose the the, the, the the thing that someone else had presented. So I think um, actually there is this democracy, uh, the democracy um, approach that at the end will be anyway some human being that will uh, take the, the final choose. Um, artificial intelligence or human at the end, the human greater artificial intelligence. So the neural system is start to be, I mean, for, for the first step, the same, right? Of the, of the owner. And then probably uh, with learning, machine machine learning could be uh, some kind of uh, changing during the, uh, the life of the, the machine. 
But if we uh, we uh, thought about um, how was the first intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, it was racist, right? Because there was this uh, man that was white that decide how uh, the machine has to recognize all people. So the black people was not uh, possible to, to identify them. At the end. So that was the first, first experiment. Uh, right now, it's for sure it's totally different. But there are many examples of um, um, the, the, also the range of possibilities. No? There was another example of a Google photo that uh, for to automate it, itself, start to, to combine all the multiple photos that was maybe similar of, uh, between them. But at the end, start to be um, start to yes to um, start to be to create another memory. That was different of the picture that the man did, right? Start to, to arrange the picture to, to automate the space. So, automate itself, like I, I want to do a good job, but I then start to yeah, modify and change the um, memory, memory of, of the human being. So, there are many topics that also all of our memory are uh, online in the cloud, but also are in the physical and then physical uh, banks. But if these banks uh, burn, uh, there is okay the backup and then the, what is the limit of this uh, this infinite uh, uh, yeah, approach uh, that we um, give to the machine at the end. So uh, I think um, with, the, with the plants, um, the approach that I try to, to combine, to show and to work is to represent perceptible things um, because we like to um, to create things that nature uh, create right so we like to um, make artificial things like uh, cloudy we like to with the air plants we, we can create cloudy artificial cloudy we can uh, uh, really repeat what the nature do so because we from I think from the beginning of the, the art, we try to, to copy the nature, right? To represent the nature. And we, we, will, we want to be the, the creatives now, like a gold at the end. Uh, so there are many, many uh, topics, I think. Um, we need for sure to um, leave the space to the nature and probably to find also a meeting with nature because we are looking now the pandemic is also one cause of this set, um, this um, situation like uh, if the animals don't have the space okay uh, um, original space maybe uh, come in the city and then go, for example the uh, spillover start to be right so the the jump from one species to another yeah so um, i think actually then, then um, there is. Uh, it, I think. I think um, today is this is awareness is present than before. When uh, with MIT, for example, there was the first researchers start to analyze this this future, but was so early at the time to to present at the war because the war was not prepared. But right, but right now uh, we are in the side of the problem, right? And uh, I think all we are uh, awareness on it. And uh, we are doing something slowly, but we are start to recycling, um, take care about what you buy, etc. So um, I think uh, start to be the connection with the plant world and the environment, etc. Thank you, Martin. And uh, from, I, I guess I've got a, an, an unstable connection, but uh, I hope you can uh, hear me. I would just leave, uh, ask one more question to Miguel and then I will uh, uh, leave the floor to Alejandro. Um, Miguel, you talked about, uh, we, we were talking about creativity and innovation and how the, the let's say that, that, that these two words are very connecting and of course it's true, but sometimes the problem is that uh, um, we give a broader sense to the, to, to the word the creativity so that even business and companies can avoid to think about beauty and artists and can think about just designer strictly connected to the product, for instance, or or to uh, programmers, which are strictly connected to the creativity of the algorithm, which is still creativity. 
So my question is, if uh, the Agenda 2030, 2030 is uh, uh, considering the uh, visionary and uh, uh, divergent and the powerful role of uh, the artists themselves for creating the beauty inside, not just the telling the story or the, the storytelling of uh, the, um, the, the new European Green Deal, but it's inviting them, inviting the artists, which, is a, which are a powerful uh, element of our society, Society to work on the uh, research and development of uh, new ways of living uh, in, since the beginning, in, in the co-design. Thank you, uh, Federico. I, I would say that yes, that totally, totally. The the designer, the the artists, are part of the funnel of innovation, uh, mm -hmm. and, and 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 I think it's very important because when we uh, let, let me let me move a little bit far from the public sector but when we talk about the private sector I, I would say that if if the if there's if the product is not attractive uh, it, the, or, or say it in another way the attractiveness of the of the project it's part of the success of the project of the of the consumption so 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 you really need the artists and I think that we're seeing this in plenty of pro of products in FD products in the last I would say, 20 years, no, something like that. If you go to the to the public sector, uh, here we're, like always, I would say, uh, some steps behind, no? and and sometimes we're not in, in, including the artists in, in the dimension. That's that's true. It, it has to be fair to say that that sometimes we, we're not including them, but we need to include them. And 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 let me just give you one 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 short example that it's far from the technological point of view, but it's but it's in the innovation reality, it's during the pandemic, right? During the pandemic in Barcelona, we, 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 we wanted to help our bars and restaurants. So the issue was uh, we, we allow them to have a space uh, in the streets, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in the middle of the streets where normally cars are there. And, and we decided to do it in a very fast way. It's, it's part of the tactical urbanism that we, we, we call. And, 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 and the way we did it, it was efficient in the way that it was very, sh in a very short time, we were able to prepare our, uh, allow our bars and, and restaurants to have uh, tables in the middle of the street so they, they, the people could, could go there and consume uh, despite the, the pandemic. However, it was functional, but it was not attractive at all. And, uh, and, and we had a lot of discussions inside of the of the of the city council and inside of the city it, it has been a discussion i don't know how many of you live in barcelona but I, i'm pretty sure that some of you live there i see Pau smiling so i did use that Pau know what i'm talking about but we had this yellow big blocks uh, 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 of cement of, of um, in the middle of the street that were not attractive at all and and now we just made an effort to include the, the design, uh, a better design in, in the solution. And now we are implementing, and we just presented yesterday, and, and we hope that this will be, make it more attractive at the end. But I, I would say that trying to, to, to summarize, for sure, we need the design, we need the artists, we need the, the beauty in, in, in the products that we do. Uh, uh, because at the end, people need to feel that they, they, they it's not about only uh, deploying a service. It's feeling that you're part of it. It's, it's the, the, the same thing that we're doing in the private sector has to be translated to the public sector. This sense of, of being part of the project that having an experience together when you do this, we have to do it also in the, in the, in the public sector. So when we're willing to achieve all these changes in, the, in our policies due to the will to reach the 2030 agenda, for sure, the, the artists have to be there and help us to, 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 to improve the way that how we present things, how we do things. Great. Thank you. We hope to see a Barcelona like that in a few years. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for this. I lived, uh, it was a very inspiring conversation. I had a lot of new insights and I leave the, the floor to our main host, Alejandro. Thank you also for organizing this. Thank you very much, Federico, and thank you very much to everybody that uh, is online and also here in the space. 
And now we were creating a, a mental map that I think uh, it will be shared with you because uh, we want to arrive to a, a final conclusions of this meeting. Um, perhaps uh, uh, in the time we are waiting, they share with us uh, this mental map. Perhaps we, I will ask a final conclusion to all of you. That is, uh, let's say the the last words we we could want to communicate. Just uh, few few words that uh, I think we could start by Daniel. That is, <laughs> thank you again because it, for you is. It's very late in the night in the Los Angeles, and I, I, we appreciate very much that you, you are here. Please, uh, could you give us your conclusions of today? And in this way, we are waiting also for this mental, uh, mental map ideas that we are drawing. Thank you. Well, everyone on this call and everyone in the room in Barcelona, you know, we're, we're coming from all over the world, connecting towards something really similar, and that is to make the world that we live in better uh, and to to really rethink the systems that that uh, we've had before but what can we do moving forward and who can we do it with and i think this is the moment this is the opportunity for us to seize this collaborative interest and initiative to think about all everyone that we can include um, in this network of networks, in this collaboration. I think Pao had mentioned, um, I forgot the, the exact uh, language that you used, Pao, but it, but it was around looking at that um, um, intersection. How do we build trust? How do we actually go beyond just the academics? How do we actually bring in the public? How do we bring in different stakeholders? Uh, and I think all of us want to live in a society and leave a legacy uh, for generations to come that is better than what we have right now. And uh, I want to thank everyone who's on here. And I'm hoping to connect with you again and collaborate with you uh, moving forward. So thank you. And for thank you, um, Alejandro, for inviting uh, me on to this panel. Well, wonderful, Daniel. And we are awaiting you here in Barcelona because we have a great city. Perhaps Mikel could <laughs> reinforce this this idea and uh, now uh, please uh, uh, Sieta if you could say just a few words of conclusions of these conversations please yeah of course uh, yeah thank you so much for this beautiful meeting it felt um, very connected which is also a word that sticks with me this interconnectedness and uh, Danielle just said it a network of networks, which I think that we're now coming into the realization that it's really about building these bridges between different disciplines, between different organizations, between different groups, um, and to really have a good look at this relationship and within this relational field to really start building from there. And uh, this is something that I also felt in this meeting, which I think is beautiful that we can share these things on such a structural level that we can have a look at these systems that we're in right now and really feel this uh, this autonomy of knowing that we can change these systems and change them into something that's more harmonious and more inclusive for uh, for all citizens and the earth itself so i think that's a very beautiful way to end this conversation so thank you for allowing us to connect through this thank you very much Sieta. And also, uh, we are waiting your visit here in, in Barcelona. And perhaps now, uh, Mikel, uh, could you share with us your conclusions for this meeting? I, I would say that, that one, one key element one that, that has been in the, in, the, in the discussion, at least in the part of the discussion I, I, I've been listening, uh, that has arise, it's, it's the need of of big partnerships, big partnerships inside inside organizations and outside with other organizations. I think this is a key element. I think that we need to break silos, uh, but and and this is a very typical typical word. Not to say let's break silos, let's break walls. It, but we have to do it. We have to do it inside our organization 
and, and, and also outside with other organizations because sometimes we don't speak with others because we think that they're not the, they're not the, the ones we have to speak with. And, and I think that the kind of, uh, of projects that you, you were presenting today are clearly a way to breaking these silos and, and making these big partnerships together. And, and, and for sure, we need them if we want to reach all, this, all these goals. That's a great co conclusion and also uh, that we try to do today to make uh, networks of networks that uh, I think is an idea also Leonardo promotes a lot and I love these networks of networks because the, I think this is the, the force. Uh, yes, and uh, please, Pau, your last words, conclusions of this day. Yeah, yeah, no, I do agree with what you all have been said. <laughs> Yes, but I do think it's time, it's a big time for, for a structural change, let's say. We have a big moment for structural change. And that means that embracing complexity, embracing, uh, embracing heterogeneity, and also embracing a good sense of balance and interdependence related to this idea of the ecosystem that is all interconnected with that. And also with the word of dialogue, Dialogue in the in the middle of, of in the middle on the top of it, let's say. So I guess this is the, the 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 main idea. Time, big time for structural change, and for making this interconnection more complex, more heterogeneous, and more balanced and independent. That's that's the main the main idea maybe that could lead from, from that this talk. Thank, thank you very much. much. <laughs> thank you very much, Paul. And going from um, Barcelona to Milano, I give the voice to Rosana because she's our guest these days with uh, also the director, Maria Gracia of the Mid Digital Culture Center in Milan. Please, Rosana. Thank you. Thank you, Leandro. So yes, I totally agree that our um, challenge, our work should, should be to create um, interconnection and the synergies, so breaking silos, so going beyond um, boundaries, physical boundaries, and also cultural boundaries. And uh, the multidisciplinarity approach is a, is a key also for, for us. And um, of course, uh, we will uh, um, enhance the, the digital creativity, digital languages, as a, also as a way to, to create this interconnection, this uh, reflection, and uh, as a key to activate the participation of, uh, of uh, the audiences of the citizens. Okay, this is my last <laughs> message. Thank you. It's it, it, it's difficult to be like the last ones because <laughs> it's all, uh, everything has been said. Uh, I think I I will if I have to grab one of the three pillars. I would say today we're keeping the together one. Uh, we need to work together. We need to be more connected. We need to uh, to strengthen communities, um, and and that allows sustainability and beautiful probably to raise by themselves. So um, grabbing a lid and wrapping up what has been said, I think together is the key word for me today. Uh, and together, I would like to add uh, that uh, this is a very European centered approach, uh, but we have just one planet. So we should be thinking together with the rest of the world and not be so Eurocentric uh, thinking. This is a big challenge. It's not easy. I'm happy to have Daniela here from another <laughs> continent. Uh, yeah, but I think that we have to also with this structural change means thinking widely. Uh, I would like to, to say um, that all these things that we said today, like the key, um, all the words, um, would really nice to to concrete, no? Would we'll like to put in the reality these these steps um, to really find democracy approach and really not just say um, all of um, yeah all, without all we have to uh, have a relationship. So yeah, human system, um, the nature, environment, etc. So I would like to to concrete these uh, appointments in some way. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you very much, everyone. And I hope the next time we will meet here in our space because we have uh, now a wonderful exhibition of Refik Anadol that is a digital artist uh, from Turkey, but based in Los Angeles. And we have uh, uh, his work, Melting Memories, that is uh, a wonderful experience. Also, uh, the, uh, it brings the data from the minds of uh, a lot of people that means that it's also good to think about uh, how thoughts and minds together creates a, a beautiful a beautiful thing and i i think i don't know if we have the final map of the ideas we could share with you and i will uh, give the voice for the final conclusion to federico that is uh, uh, coordinating this this talk uh, Yes, please, Federico, go ahead. Uh, or we we'll wait. Uh, yeah. I think they, they are going to. I think I've said much. Yes, they, they are going to share in. They are trying to to do to do that. To they were doing this this. Ah, okay, it's here. Okay, here you, you are the the mental map, and um, perhaps you could do the conclusions following this this. Uh, Visual, visual representation of the words we were saying here. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, everyone. I I'm just watching the, this uh, this mental map and the, this word. I guess that uh, uh, I, I like the fact that there are some words like the big the the big one the big ones are uh, beautiful, sustainable, and together, not in that uh, term. So it opens as uh, other, uh, other meanings. Uh, and uh, there are some uh, words connected to the infrastructure topics, so the hardware topic, and some words like uh, energy, machine, um, and architecture, but also some words connected to the software topic. Uh, so um, let's say presence, uh, performance, uh, design, uh, connectivity. And I think that we also have to keep in mind that we have these, these two elements, the hardware and the software, are two elements that cannot be separate, ever separated. Uh, we, we sometimes uh, try to think about the cities and, and um, rural areas are just infrastructures, but they are not. And I think that all these uh, talk gave us the opportunity to understand that even when we think about our world, uh, we have to think about uh, in the same way that we think when uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, or any technology works, it has two sides and we cannot even forget the two sides. And artists and scientists and researchers uh, with their knowledge bring the software. And then there are a lot of infrastructures which are also very important, which brings the hardware. This is uh, the first thing that I see from this, um, from this mental map. And um, I thank you again, all of you for... Uh, for having contributed to this uh, wonderful talk. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you very much, uh, our guests here in the space. And I hope uh, next time uh, we will join all together and have a, a good food also together. Thank you. See you soon. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye.